last year the news broke and anybody who was anybody who knew what it was, was was happy they were doing this and they were canceling the bad girl movie some might say oh no that was that thing and they're gonna bring it all together it was a terrible idea they weren't making a bad girl movie what they were doing was trying to push a racial agenda that's it they were trying to push that because they had bad girl as a as a brown skin you know when we all know barbara gordon is white they weren't interested in making a good movie they weren't interested in putting out anything you know cinema quality no they just wanted to check boxes and figure you're supposed to love that because keep in mind this is what they see and what they were doing and what Warner Bros. was doing before this whole merger came along. They were willing to, to scrap anything. They were scrapping Superman to replace with Supergirl and not and and, 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 and of course a kind of Latina Supergirl also, sort of thing like that. They didn't look nothing like the characters that we that we that we know, you know, what did they wanted to replace that. Or what they wanted to do the same with Batgirl and so many other projects that were just not good. They were just looking to push that that terrible agenda. I was happy when they cancelled them because I didn't want to see this nonsense at all. A lot of people with their salt were saying the exact same thing. But then you had people like Kevin Smith come out and talk and say that, you know, it's a bad look to cancel the bad girl movie. Not that, you know, that you know, the movie was good and that. No, no, it's a bad look. You had Vita Ayala basically calling um, David Zaslav a racist because why she would just say what why are they gonna do racism or because that's all they were concerned with the race of the actor who was playing bad girl not the movie itself not the character of barbara gordon nothing they just wanted to check some boxes now months later we get to find out the movie wasn't just terrible it was unreleasable that, that, that alone was tell you how awful the movie is because they have been well, buried bad girl and never never even want to, to make any kind of theatrical release of anything on DVD, any kind of leak, anything. And keep in mind, this movie was like about 90, 92% completed and they just scrapped it. Get into this article here from Bounding Into Comics. DC Studios head Peter Saffron confirms Batgirl was unreleasable, says it would have hurt everyone involved. Months after Batgirl was cancelled, seemingly for the purpose of a tax write-off. Yeah, but that's just take the tax write-off than to just take that bro. That's it. More reasons for the decision are coming to light. New studio Cole Need Peter Saffron, short of taking credit for the idea, is explaining to me that quality had to do had a lot to do with it. He thought it was bad after seeing the movie with everybody else before all the, all the effects were finished. Now, people will say, as I said before, that they shouldn't have done it. There was 90% complete. They should have done it. Why take a tax write-off? You have to look at the long-term thing of this. And especially if you're a business owner running a company like this, sometimes it's better to just cancel it lose some money take a tax write off than to put out something that will hurt your brand long term because if this movie was so bad and they put it out there that could very well be what dc studios becomes synonymous with and it will and, and every time somebody talk about dc studios they will talk about oh my god you remember man that god awful or a full bad girl movie and now but I can't watch nothing that them have no more and I think that it could happen like that so you have to look at it from a business perspective and that's why they decided to cancel this let's go on speaking of the recent DC presentation in Los Angeles Saffron said I saw the movie there were a lot of incredibly talented people in front of and behind the camera on that film. But I had to say something like that. I don't know what they talk. But that film was not releasable. It happens sometimes. That film was not releasable. 
he had had to believe he, he believes that cancelling was a stunning and brave choice. Also sharing his concerns for the filmmakers involved, Saffron continued, I actually think that David Zaslav and the team made a very bold and courageous decision to cancel it because it would have hurt DC. It would have hurt those people involved. I think they stood up to support DC. The characters, the story, the quality, and all that. Yeah, because all of that could have been damaged. Because like I said, all they were interested in was ticking boxes. The quality was so bad and the story had to be so terrible. For you to actually come out and say it was unreleasable. Moreover, he still wants to work with the crew. Okay, well, yeah, you know, you had to come out and say that apparently they already, um, 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 the screenwriter, Christina Hudson, um, she's some, she's somebody we're already back in business with. So that's not looking good for Nisi Studios going forward because these people were involved with such a terrible, terrible thing and you're perfectly happy to just keep working with them. <sighs> um, Saffron says Batgirl's big drawback is it was built for a small screen. I think I think I, I don't think it was built for any screen, honestly. He continues, I, I think it was not an easy decision, but they made the right decision by by shelving it. The film was reportedly of a CW quality. Yeah, because when when you look at the Batgirl outfit. It looks like she is dressed in some kind of hand-me-down biker outfit. That's it. The, the, the quality, the special effects, I think, did not look good at all. It literally looked like a CW show. I actually said that in a video that I you know, when, when they finally debuted the, the costume, but it looked, it looked terrible. Absolutely terrible. Right. A creative tone, the new brass is abandoning and was rumored to do an injustice to Michael Keaton's Batman legacy. But if they had screwed up Michael Keaton's Batman legacy at that point, them, them, would, have, them would have really had to, to catch, and catch their nene with that one. But honestly, directors Abil L. R. B. and Bilal Fala were told their talent and quality were not an issue, but Warner Brothers, Warner Discovery CEO David Zaslav, like Saffron, somewhat disputed this when he called it a casualty of restructuring. Um, Zaslav said, we're not going to release any film before it's ready. The focus is going to be how do we make each of these films as good as possible. So, bottom line of it is, Bat girl, this, look at this here. This, this is not talking about. This looks cheap. That's the only way to describe this whole thing. It looks cheap. Absolutely cheap and ridiculous. This was not, this was never a movie that should have been made. Honestly, never a movie that should have been made. If you wanted to do a bat girl movie or a bat or something down the line, you have to establish the character first. And the only way you can establish Batgirl is to establish Batman. That's how it works. They can't be a supergirl without a superman. That's the that's the main character. You cannot have Artemis or Naro as an Amazon without Wonder Woman. They are just certain things that have to stick. And if you don't have these things cemented in, you're wasting time. This movie was never a theatrical release. This movie was for the sole purpose of pushing woke agenda hard. Everybody involved was more concerned with the race of the character or the race of the actress playing Batgirl rather than the character of Barbara Gordon herself. You wanted to have Michael Keaton in there as old Batman to try and pass all the way. Nobody wants that. People people would rather watch Batman Beyond than to watch this. I do feel sorry for Brendan Fraser. He has been getting a lot of work lately and, 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 and what I want to understand is Firefly thing was okay. He may come back around something later on. They may very well decide to recast him as Firefly in some one of, one of the other movies going forward in the near future. If, if it does, or you could get a different role that works out well, okay. But this movie was terrible. You know it, I know it, they know it. They should have never made this. And because they chose to, 
Now we're getting the insight from Peter Safran. This movie was unreleasable. That alone was to show how absolutely dumb what a crap it really was. If you don't make, I've said it before, I'll say it again. Ticking boxes is not a sustainable practice. It will backfire. It is backfiring. And this is what we're going to see. We're going to see more of these things flopping badly going forward. Let me know your thoughts on this in the comments. If you have a different opinion, I'd love to hear it. If you like the video, you should have to hit that thumbs up. Subscribe if you haven't already. Ring the notification bell. Let me notify every time I put out a new video. And I shall see you all next time. Take care.